Hello, dear students. The next part of the syllabus is history of cell biology. Here we are going to see the contribution of various scientists that to the field of cell biology. For the matter of convenience, I have not given the year that have been associated there with the discovery. However, I have given only the name of the scientists and their respective discovery. This would be very helpful to write the things in the same order there in the examination. So, first one is Aristotle and Parsilius. Parsilius. They are the scientists who have stated that all animals and plants are complicated in structure and they are constituted of few elements which are repeated in each of them. So that is the finding or some assumption kind of things of Aristotle and Parsilesis. The next one is a Davency. Davency is a person related with the use of various lenses that for identifying and studying the cells. The next one is a Conrad Jeschner. Conrad Jeschner published results of his studies mainly related to cell structure, especially related to the protease. Protease are some kind of protozoa that belongs to the group called foraminifera. That is some protease cell structure have been first denoted or explained by Conrad Jeschner. The foraminiferan in which Conrad Jeschner has worked is, this is the structure of that foraminiferans. That is, they are all protease or the other name for them are protozoa. Next one is Galileo Galilei, who invented simple microscopes to study the compound eyes of the insects. The insects will be usually having compound eyes. Their eyes will be different from what we have as our eyes. Okay, so this is a compound eye of the insects. So it will be looking like this. Many small things will be, be composed together to form into a compound eye. Next one is Francis Janssen and Zachariah Janssen. These are the scientists who are associated there with the invention of compound microscopes. Compound microscopes are those that will be using two different lenses to view the microorganism. So those microscopes have been invented by Frankius Jensen and Zachariah Jensen. So this is a simple image showing the difference between a simple microscope and a compound microscope. If you look at into compound microscopes, there will be two sets of lenses. These are all referred as a objective lens and this one is a eyepiece. This both the lens are involved in the magnification of the object. What you keep it here. However, here if you look at, you will be having only a single lens which is magnifying that particular object. That is the reason this single lens holding microscope is referred as a simple microscope. However, a two lens containing microscopic system is referred as compound microscope. The next one is the contribution of Marcello Malfighi. He was the first person to use microscope in order to examine and describe about the thin slices of animal tissues that have been obtained from various organs of the animals. That is thin slice will be made and that particular tissues will be examined there in the microscope. For that he has used the tissues of brain, liver, kidney and spleen to view in the microscope. The next contribution is important one with respect to cell biology. The reason is he is a person who coined the term cell. Based on what he coined the term this cell, mainly by observing a thin slice of dried cork under a compound microscope. How a cork will be looking like if you see in the microscope. So this is the structure of a cork. 
so this is a structure of a car okay this is a structure of a car how it will be looking when you are seeing that in the microscope cork under microscope if you keep the cork cells under microscopes it will be looking like this so these are the cork cells you are viewing under microscope okay so cork cells will be viewing as a individual cell like things when you are seeing it under microscope okay so these are the various structures they have observed with the cork cells so based on the observation of dried cork cell under a compound microscope he has coined the term cell and his various essays have been collected under the title micrographia micrographia is a book title in which various essays related to the cell have been collectively published by robert hook in one such essay of the particular book only he is describing about the cell structure that is cell structure is looking like a honeycomb of chambers or cells so if you look at the cell structure it is looking like a honeycomb structure honeycomb structure as well as cell structure will be same say i try to show you now the honeycomb structure say how the honeycomb structure will be present honeycomb structure see this is the honeycomb structure this honeycomb structure as well as the cork cell structures are looking like a same so that is the reason he told that the cork cells are looking like a honeycomb structure the next one is anton von leeuwenhoek he has improved the uh, microscopy with the help of certain polished lenses that are having a short focal length by using such kind of lenses he has viewed the microscope and he have taken a different kind of sketches hand drawn sketches about the appearance of the organism mainly the appearance of bacilli cocci and spiral cells of the organisms are taken up by anton von leeuwenhoek here you can look at the type of microscope that have been used by anton von leeuwenhoek he has used a very simple microscopic kind of thing in which he has viewed the different kinds of organ organisms those organism structures have been he has noted there as sketches you can able to see the spiral shaped cells even a paramecium kind of cells these are the cells he has denoted there by looking into the microscope the next contribution is by nimeya guru he has published the details about microscopic examinations of some cross sections of flowers roots and stems of the plants and indicated the cellular nature of the plant tissues so cellular nature of the plant tissues were proved for first time by nimeya guru by using microscopic cross sections so when you look at the microscopic cross section of the cells it will be looking like this this is a plant cells microscopic cross section so like that he has taken the microscopic cross section of the cells and proved that cellular nature is existing there on the plant cells next one is a mirbel mirbel has also supported the points of nimeya group that is all plants are composed of cells the next one is again an important finding there in the cell biology that is contribution of shielden who is a botanist and schwann who is a zoologist both these persons ideas only later lead to the formulation of cell theory so shielden has given an idea about the cells and how they have been arranged there into a structure in the plants however schwann a zoologist who have applied again the shielden's ideas of cell arrangement there on the animals and he has found that animals were also composed of cells both their findings have later helped in the formulation of cell theory the next one is george pallet 
जॉर्ज पैलट इज रेफर्ड एज अ फादर ऑफ सेल बायोलॉजी वट इज द इंपॉर्टेंट कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन ऑफ लॉर्ज पैलट सो लॉर्ड जॉर्ज पैलट हैज बीन अवॉर्डेड विद द नोबल प्राइज इन फिजियोलॉजी एंड मेडिसिन फॉर इज इनोवेशन इन इलेक्ट्रॉन माइक्रोस्कोपी एंड सेल्फ फ्रैक्शनेशन टेक्निक दिस बोथ फॉर्म इन टू ए बेसिक फाउंडेशन फॉर द मॉडर्न मॉलिकुलर बायोलॉजी एंड सेल बायोलॉजी दट इज अ रीजन ही हैज बीन अवॉर्डेड विद ए नोबल प्राइज इन फिजियोलॉजी एंड मेडिसिन that is a reason he is also referred as the father of cytology however sometime they used to refer robert hooke as also as a father mainly robert hooke is referred as a father of cytology that is the old term of cell biology for that father of cytology is a cousin of means that refers to robert hooke however father of cell biology refers to the contribution of George Pellet mainly in the cell fractionation and electron microscopy, which has laid a strong foundation of cell biology. Other notable discoveries of George Pellet includes the ribosomes that have been attached there to the endoplasmic reticulum that we now used to refer as a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the main findings for which he has been awarded a Nobel Prize. in the field of physiology and medicine